welcome to the Haunted Haulers podcast, a place where your hosts, Wendy and April, discuss the creepy things that lurk in the misty shadows of the Appalachian Hills. I am, as always, the mysterious voice in the walls. Hey everybody, I'm Wendy. And I'm April. Today's story comes from Van Cleve, a small community located near Little Frozen Creek in Breathitt County, Kentucky. In July of 1939, this community suffered one of the worst natural disasters in Kentucky history when tragic flash flooding occurred in the early morning hours. The waters rose quickly, with reports of a wall of water more than 20 foot high barreling down the valley, sweeping away everything and everyone in its path. 79 Kentuckians from three different counties lost their lives that night, with the greatest loss of life, 52 casualties, coming from Breathitt County. The Kentucky Mountain Bible Institute, located on Frozen Creek, was completely destroyed in the flood, and nine of its students and staff members lost their lives when a dormitory was swept completely off its foundation and downstream. As with most tragedies, stories and legends surrounding this event spread and grew over the years. Located on Frozen Creek were the remains of an old school. These remains included dormitories, an old stone church, a gymnasium, and other various buildings, one with a boiler room in the basement. As the stories go, this site was what remained of the Kentucky Mountain Bible Institute, and the story of how the students perished told of how sirens went off warning residents of impending severe weather, but it was believed that the weather event was an incoming tornado. Faculty and staff gathered the children of the school and took them down to the boiler room in the basement to protect them from the tornado. However, by the time they realized that it was a flash flood, instead, it was too late. As the water swept through the campus, it flooded the boiler room and drowned all those that had sought shelter there. The site became a hot spot for amateur ghost hunters, and all kinds of spooky stories accompanied the ruins. It was said that there was hot spots and cold spots throughout the buildings. There have been reports of hearing children laughing or crying, and also seeing strange glowing eyes coming from windows in the dilapidated buildings. Most people who talked about taking trips there stated that they didn't experience anything inherently spooky or scary while they were there on the premises, but that later, when they reviewed photos and recordings that were made, they noticed orbs and ghostly figures, heard ghostly voices, or experienced other strange phenomena. However, research into this location tells a different story. The Kentucky Mountain Bible Institute was completely destroyed in the flood, and it was later rebuilt in a location out of the floodplain and reopened in October of 1939. It still exists today as the Kentucky Mountain Bible College. The ruins that most people simply refer to as frozen are not actually the ruins of the campus that was destroyed in the flood. These ruins are instead the ruins of the McGoffin Bible Institute, which moved to Breathitt County in 1940 and was constructed over a year after the terrible flood occurred. This school operated into the late 1960s or early 1970s, when after declining enrollment, it closed its doors for good. What students remained transferred to the Oneida Baptist School. The property on which the McGoffin Bible Institute sat was also given to the Oneida Baptist School, but it remained abandoned. The location became a hangout for teenagers, become covered with graffiti, and fell into general disrepair. At some point, the girls' dormitory burned down. By December of 2006, the site had been completely torn down. And now it's time for the breakdown. This leaves me with so many questions and so many things I need explained. So let's start with the obvious. Um, you still live in a hauler. I lived in a hauler for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We know that it can go from raining to completely wiping out the roads, taking out houses in just a matter of a little bit of time. Right. So the flooding, yeah, I mean, it's a dangerous thing. It's scary. Um, it can really impact people. So, yeah, that, that's, that's a scary thing. But I have some confusion. Okay. So tell me about, you know, uh, the site. Is, is the site where... The Bible College where the people lost their lives. I'm a little confused on this side. Okay, so you got to remember here. So we're in the middle of the Bible Belt. Okay. We're in eastern Kentucky. This occurred in eastern Kentucky. There's more than one Bible College okay. in the location. This is my confusion. So the original Bible College, which was the um, Kentucky Mountain Bible Institute. 
So that place was completely destroyed in the flood. It, it, I don't know if it was on the exact site. I don't think it was the exact site that these ruins are on, but it was in the same general area. It was on Frozen Creek. Mm -hmm. So in this little, little area, when the flood came, it totally wiped out the Bible College. And one of the really interesting pieces of research that I found um, was from Moorhead State University, and it was a lot of like handwritten and typewriter notes that were written up by people who were working um, in the the rescue efforts and the first aid efforts, and it talked about how um, the, the entire entirety of Van Cleve was just basically leveled, and that this little dormitory on this uh, Kentucky Mountain Bible Institute, that the dormitory was just completely swept away. I know it had one teacher, his three kids, a couple of students, and then some friends of his family were all in the dormitory at the time, because this happened at like 3.30 in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. It was on July 4th, into the early hours of July 5th, it happened at 3.30, all of this rain came down, and they said that the, the floodwaters came up like in a matter of 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So everybody was asleep. Nobody knew what was going on. And it swept the whole dormitory away, and all of those people were lost. So that was nine people we know that were killed that were from that Bible college. Okay. Um, so the confusion comes in. That place, this, you know, this happened in July. So the Kentucky Bible Mountain Institute, they were rebuilding. They bought a place up on a hillside, rebuilt their college, so they continued on and are even still there today, although I think it's Bible College now instead of Bible Institute. So another Bible College came in later, after the flood, and that was the uh, the Methodist Bible College, and they came in and they created a new campus, which also was on Frozen Creek. And so the ruins that everybody said, oh, yeah, that's where the flood happened and all those kids were killed, actually are the ruins of this second Bible college and not the ruins okay. that happened during the flood. That clears up my confusion. Yeah. So we got we got lots of Bible organizations <laughs> here and they sold, you know, they were there for this happened in uh, the 40s when they uh, first put the new college up and it lasted maybe into the late 60s, early 70s. And at that point, they left out and then. All their students went to the Oneida Baptist College, mm -hmm. and then they gave them that uh, property as well. Okay. So we got three different organizations here, three different Bible colleges that are kind of all in this area. And similarly named, so it's kind of hard to keep them straight. Yeah, it is. But that story is heartbreaking um, about the dormitory. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that could easily, I could easily see that happening if you're asleep and you don't realize what's happening. Mm-hmm. And the floodwaters, they raise quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't know what's going on. And we see all the time on the news yeah. places getting swept away in the floodwaters. They're yeah. so swift. and All these little creeks and tributaries and streams and things like that that go through these little haulers, they very quickly can wash out of their banks and flood. Yeah. That is heartbreaking. You know, and that part we know is true because mm -hmm. there's enough history there that we can find. You know, as I was reading through that document, and I'll link it in our show notes at Moorhead State University, it was really interesting to read through some of that. And it talked about a wall of water. You know, in one place I saw it said 20 foot high and another 22 foot high, and it just wiped out the whole town. I mean, it just kind of swept it away. And it talked about how long it took to find all of the bodies and all the things that happened. But Breathitt County took the brunt of it. I think it involved uh, Breathitt County, Round County, and another county that there were casualties in. So 79 people total lost their lives. Now, there is a story about... A fac some faculty members taking students down to a boiler room. Okay, so that's where the the myth or the legend okay. part comes in. And this in. is adding to some more confusion for me. Yes. So, you know, over the years, as people are wont to do, they tell stories about places like that. So we've got these, these old school ruins, and everybody believes that it's the ruins that were part of the flood. Mm -hmm. And they start, oh, I heard what happened. Oh, I know what happened. Um, yeah, they thought it was a tornado. And that seems to be the most prevalent story, is that the you know, sirens went off, there was impending weather, coming in they all think it's a tornado so they all go down into the boiler room where it is underground and as the flood water sweeps through you know it's very quickly flooded and they all drown so that's the the prevailing story about the place that goes around okay and that's not been verified or no that that is you know as you do into the research about it you know we do know that nine people were killed but again this is a totally different site there was never any tragedy at this site. It's just people kind of mixing the legend of okay. fact and fiction. Okay, that makes sense. 
So my interest in this story, this is kind of like a personal interest story for me, um, because when I was in college, you know, way back in the day in the <laughs> early 2000s, a bunch of my college friends liked to go out and like look into places like that. Mm -hmm. So one night, a bunch of them got together and they went out to tour these ruins. So like many people who visited the place, nothing crazy happened while they were there. You know, they didn't see anything creepy. You know, they just they, they, they said the creepiest thing they saw was that, you know, in one of the rooms, there's this old bathtub that's like full of muck and this nastiness. And it's kind of kind of gross looking. And they talked about how um, pretty the church had been at one time because it had this old stone church on the grounds. And there's a lot of pictures from that night that I'm going to share on our Instagram so that you guys can check them out, too. So, um you know, nothing crazy happens. They're there. They check everything out. They leave. They come home. Nothing major happens. But once they go looking into the photographs that they had taken, there were all kinds of crazy things that showed up on the photographs. So in some of the photographs, there's these crazy orbs. Um, in some of them, there's this like crazy smoke monster that kind of looks like a dragon. Hmm. Um, there's lots of little faces here and there or like shady apparitions. And all of this stuff showing up. Um, one group photo that they took, there's, you know, all this smoke and stuff over the photo. And then they took another one right after. Because, you know, this was back in the day where you took lots of pictures in succession because you didn't know which one was right, going to turn yeah. out, right? So in the second picture, there's this big, like, claw-looking thing sitting on the shoulders of one of the guys. And so that was kind of weird in and of itself. Well, then later on, they had also, you know, taken a camcorder at the time and had recorded some of what they were doing. So later on, when they were going back and reviewing this, they were like, oh, gosh, what is that? So at one point, when they walk into the gymnasium, one of my friends turns and looks at the other friend and says, wow, imagine, uh, you know, come and confronting that during the night. And he was just talking about how creepy the, the room was, thinking about, like, the people who had to make the rounds to check on the students and things like that because it was just a creepy atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so right after he says that, you hear this, like, creepy voice that says help me and so i actually have the audio clip from that video oh, wow. we're gonna play it now so um we're gonna play this first clip you'll hear what he says then you hear the creepy voice and then it kind of cuts off so we're gonna play that for you now imagine confronting that Okay, so I'm hearing that for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I was expecting this to be like one of those TV shows where you kind of have to use your imagination a little bit and you have to really stretch to hear what's being said. I heard it plain as day. Yeah. That sounded like a little kid. It does sound like a little kid. So what I wanted to go ahead and do, too, is we're just going to kind of cut that clip down for anybody who missed it the first okay. time. Oh, I heard it clearly. Here is just the the part with the ghostly voice. So now we're going to drop that clip in. Okay. Imagine confronting that room. Uh, Okay, so I'm getting 1980s poltergeist, don't go into the light Caroland vibes from yeah. this. Uh, I want to go help this person, this little kid. Well, and the creepy thing about it is, you know, they didn't hear this while they were there. And they did, it was a couple of months later when they found this, because after this, they made a trip to the mushroom mines, which we'll probably talk about on oh, a future definitely. episode. Uh, but in going back to find the mushroom mines footage, it was on the same video as the frozen footage. And when they were going back through there, one of my friend's brother was there, was like, wait, wait, what was that? And like, nobody had heard it the first time they watch through it so it's it's kind of creepy that definitely has a creep factor yes i get chills every time yeah. i hear that so now as one is wont to do back in the early 2000s anytime you want to share something with someone what do you do you create a geocities page <laughs> so they had a geocities page all about their adventures there and they had all the pictures posted on it and things like that now some of you might be too young to remember this for, for everyone under the age of 45 geocities <laughs> was sort of like a website hosting site where anybody could just get their domain and, and have their web page so yeah. yeah, sort of like MySpace. For <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're talking early, early internet days here. And everybody had a GeoCities page, oh, yeah. even if it was just so that you had a little under construction gif going <laughs> my, on there. My old band had a GeoCities page for, yeah. 
Well, something that some of you might be too young to remember is that, you know, back before we had message boards and commenting threads and all of that kind of stuff, if you wanted to leave a message for somebody's page, you had to sign their guest book. <laughs> you had to sign their guest book. And so after they posted these clips, something really interesting happened. Somebody took that original sound file that, you know, it has my friends saying, imagine confronting that in the night, and then it's got the creepy voice. They took that and they reversed it. And when you play that backwards, it sounds like he's saying, I'm here hanging out with the devil. So now we're going to play that for oh, you. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's a whole bunch of no for me. <laughs> um, that is a big no. <laughs> So, little kid yelling, help me, um, that's one thing. <sighs> Hanging out with the devil, yeah, <laughs> that's a no. That's a no for me. Okay, so let's talk about this. Oh. So, we have a location that is, if you really look at the history of it, was never actually the site of any kind of disaster. Because remember, these ruins are not from the original flood disaster. They were the ruins of the school that was built afterwards. And that's where, yeah, that's where my confusion comes in, because that's not where the bad stuff happened. Right. Nothing bad ever happened there. No little kids died. The whole story about people drowning in the boiler room, that wasn't even what happened in the original tragedy that happened. So why is there some creepy stuff going on there? That's a great question because that's definitely creepy. That yeah. is definitely creepy. I mean, that makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up when Especially I hear that. Especially because you know these people. Mm -hmm. uh, you trust these people. Right. If this were something that I had just heard from, you know, some random person, I might be very questioning of it. But these were, you know, good friends of mine. And um, this was the kind of thing that they did all the time. Right. So a little background on my friends. Um, they are super religious so they are very strong in their christian faith mm -hmm. as is common in this area of the mm -hmm. world and so they have some interesting theories and i'm going to share some of those with you now is about why this is going on so first of all if nothing bad ever happened here why is there a little kid crying help me and if a little kid was truly in trouble they're not going to be like help me you know they're going to be screaming help me right, calling yeah. out the names of people that they think might be able to help them um, you know i would be calling out for my mom it's more frantic i would imagine mm -hmm. if a little kid was truly in trouble than what this is so my friends believe that because people believe this about an area and that belief gives power to things and since they believe that you know the whole idea of the devil and evil and demons and all of that is to uh, confound people and to, you know, make them distrust their Christian faith. Because if you truly believe the Christian faith, then ghosts can't really be a thing because, you know, when you die, you, you know, you go wherever you go and you're not you know, haunting around and things like that. So right. they if, think, if you're going to heaven, why would you want to <clears throat> Yeah, hang around? Yeah. And, yeah. You, you would want to stay in heaven. You right. wouldn't want to come back to. So they think that this is a demonic kind of entity and that it is given power by the belief in the stories that are being told about this place and that its purpose is to confound people. Because, again, if you are religious and you believe the Christian teaching, then, you know, the ghosts of people that have died that kind of counteracts with that. They're kind of at odds with one another. And so that's why they think these crazy things are happening. And so when you look at these pictures that I'm going to share on our Instagram and you see like apparitions, like there's one picture of the boiler room. And if you kind of zoom in on it and you look at it, it kind of looks like a little kid that's been impaled. There's all these like crazy things. Oh, wow. But why would you see something like that if nothing bad ever happened there? And who do these types of entities go after other than people who are strong in their faith right and so um you know the place has been torn down now from what i understand by december 2006 this whole place has been leveled but my friends at the time were like we would not go back there for I any amount of money to be blessed and doused in holy water <laughs> yeah. in addition to the mm -hmm. leveling that's just my opinion right well and then that begs the question if the belief is gone is the power gone mm. you know if if it truly is a demonic kind of presence 
and there's nothing there to kind of inflate that power. Oh, this is this creepy place. Let's go check it out. You know, if there's nothing there feeding that, does it go away? Hmm. Good question. So as a funny side note, in their research, as they were um, trying to look into what actually happened at this place, they started calling people in the phone book. And do you know that when you call people in Van Cleve, Kentucky, uh, you know, the prefix for their phone numbers are 666. So that's what brought all this on. <laughs> so there's actually um, around that same time period, there's some information out there about how the Bible College was trying to get their phone number changed because they felt it improper to have the mark of the beast as the beginning of their phone number. It makes perfect sense. I can see that. Yeah. So, yes, the phone company. Thank you, phone company. <laughs> <laughs> the phone company, it's all your fault. All your fault. <laughs> yes, I can see that. That's, that's, that's creepy in and of itself. Yeah. It's a little creepy. And which the phone company was like, well, if you're not religious, it's not a problem. And they're like, but we're a Bible but college. we are. <laughs> we so are very is. religious. Yeah. Did you see the name Bible <laughs> in the institution? Like, the, that's it's right there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of our thing. We don't want this. Yeah. I get it. So, so stories like these always creep me out. You know, I, I can deal with the idea of ghosts, but ghosts. when we start getting into like demonic presences, I'm demonic out. entities, I'm done. I don't know that I want much part of that. <laughs> That's one I would not go and investigate. Mm -mm, no, I don't want. We're mm -mm. not taking any road trips to no. <laughs> Frozen to check out the former grounds. We'll take your word for it. Yeah. So, listeners, we would love to know what you think about this story um, there wasn't a whole lot out there when we went to research i just found a few different references so if you've ever been there or yeah. know someone who's been there what was your experience yes, we you, would love to hear about it if you have experiences we will not be going and getting our own experiences but if you have any we will totally take them secondhand yeah. <laughs> you can contact us via facebook at haunted haulers we are also on instagram at Haunted Haulers, and you can even find us on Twitter, at Haunted Haulers. We do have a website, www.hauntedhaulers.com, and you can email us at hauntedhaulers at gmail.com. Until next time, listeners, beware of things lurking in the shadows.